Network. And in the biggest deal, just since July, Uber has agreed to buy the alcohol delivery startup Drizzly for $1.1 billion of cash and stock. This coming after the startup had a breakout year as consumers turned to its app instead of heading to the store during the pandemic. With more on this is Bloomberg News' venture capital and technology reporter Lizette Chapman live in San Francisco. Lizette, thanks so much for being here. Um, let's talk about Uber shifting its strategy from transporting people to transporting food throughout the pandemic, a shift that boosted its delivery sales 125% in the third quarter. So the big question, how is the acquisition of Drizzly in line with the company's shifting strategy? Well, what can I say? People like their booze. You know, this was, uh, <laughs> you know, this is something that, you know, kind of makes sense. It's in depth with what, you know, Dar Khosr Shahi, the CEO of Uber, has been saying for the past year or so, even before the pandemic. Uh, Khosr Shahi said um, delivery is growing and they were going to focus just on delivery and rides. And you saw them sell this rapid succession of all of these kind of other bets that they had on, you know, flying you know, flying cars and self-driving uh, vehicles and, you know, even electric bikes to just focus on these two main areas of delivering people and delivering stuff and their bid to make good on their promise to turn a profit this year. So this is totally in step with what they've been trying to do. So I, I do wonder, you know, in cases like this, why, why Uber would make a, why Uber would make an acquisition like this versus just trying to, to add alcohol delivery to I its own app. I mean, obviously it made the calculation and thinks that right. this is a much more efficient way to do it. But what can you tell us about that? Well, I can tell you that, you know, Drizzly, just like its competitors, like, you know, Minibar and Tipple and Saucy and these other ones, there's a lot of behind the scenes work. You have to get, um, you have to get permission to purchase and then distribute alcohol, and it can be county by county. Um, uh. You know what what act you know what what is legal in one state or one county. There's dry counties, there's dry states, and it's actually pretty complicated on the back end. So what you know Uber gets with this 1.1 billion dollar acquisition, and it's going to be stock um, and cash, 90 percent stock. Um, is all of those agreements already set in place. They've already done the heavy lifting. Now, their timing is kind of interesting um, because, you know, when they did the Postmates acquisition, which was, you know, they announced that back in June and they just closed it in December, their stock was about half the amount of what it's trading at right now. Mm. Um, so, you know, they really kind of timed it. They waited until they were rich and looking in the money. And, you know, and that was not the case back in June when it was all doom and gloom and they, the delivery um, – surge from their, you know, from their eat, you know, portion of their business hadn't really come online, but, you know, their stock has really surged and um, now they're making use of it and, and scooping this one up. Okay. And so it's a big win for Drizzly investors. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask that uh, because your, your post <laughs> ends, uh, Lizette, with, with some numbers that, um, and I love what you write here. You say investors in Drizzly will want to break open a bottle of champagne. That's just perfect. Uh, the company valued at $73 million back in 2017. So we're talking about yeah. a return on investment from 17, uh, a $73 million investment, or valuation, yeah. excuse me, just four years ago? Yep. Wow. That's why venture capitalists are kind of this, this very rarefied and very sought after kind of, um, you know, small subsector within the private, you know, markets. Um, you know, you get one good hit like this, and it's a hell of a hit for Polaris <laughs> Partners and Tiger Global and some of the other ones, you get one good one and, you, you know, you could have 99 dogs and this one makes up for it. So that's kind of how the VC game is played. And you never know when the next one's going to come. So, you know, this I'm sure they're celebrating today. I, and, um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see how this works out. But yeah, 1. maybe one billion is no small amount. <laughs> maybe an, an expensive bottle of champagne. Uh, what does this mean for, for people who use the Uber app and, and what is next for Uber? Right. So Uber and Drizzly both said that Drizzly was going to operate as a subsidiary. It was going to continue with its own app that all these people love and use and have been really using since the pandemic kicked in. Um, and Uber will also integrate it into its own app eventually. That doesn't just happen overnight. There's some engineering involved and, you know, there's some integration and some user stuff just to make it easy to just as easy to tap to get, you know, a. Uh, you know, a good bottle of scotch as it would be to, you know, call a ride across town or get some Thai food, right? So that's what's going to go down for them. And um, that's what we have to look forward to. Bloomberg News' is Lizette Chapman. Lizette, thanks so much for taking the time and joining us right now on Quick Take.